Hey, g'day guys. So, look, I thought I might talk a little bit today about something that's quite interesting to me and that's the whole ecosystem of sort of YouTube and YouTube reviews. You know, I watched a review recently or I watched a video recently of a guy who was talking about YouTube reviews with regards to like guitar reviews and um, that kind of thing. Um, and he was talking about can, you know, can you trust YouTube reviewers? Um, and that sort of implicit problem of when the waters get muddied a bit between um, people being sent gear and then being asked to review that gear. And it's definitely something that I've seen, um, you know, in the last four years of just me having my very small, tiny footprint of a YouTube channel. You do see now a lot more channels where it's just gear after gear after gear. And it almost is, you know, it gets into that point where it's starting to feel a little bit like just the home shopping channel. Um, so there's not much discussed about why you're going outside or the joys of the night sky or, you know, whatever it is that's supposed to be exciting in the hobby, the, the, the sort of the end point of it. It's all just gear. It's all just like a conveyor belt of one thing um, after the next. And they kind of leave a bad taste in your mouth, those sort of channels and those reviews. I think a lot of people probably know who those channels are. I'm not going to sort of name anything in my video here to be disparaging. There are definitely some good channels out there, but you can you can tell like you can tell channels where they're obviously they're they're being sent gear. You know, there might be different agreements between channels and and um, and sort of vendors where they're being where they either get to keep the gear or maybe they get. Um, you know, maybe there is some sort of paid promotion. I know there's all sort of different. Sometimes they just have to send the gear back. But there is that obviously, there is a slight vested interest there because the, the more favorable you are about that gear, obviously the more, likely, the, the, the more likely it is you're gonna be sent other things to be reviewed. So um, you can kind of tell with these reviews that the positive stuff tends to be positive or sometimes maybe slightly exaggerated, but also the negative stuff tends to be quite diplomatic. So one example might be, for example, like, you know, a telescope, it might be like a, a focuser or a, or a, the optics or whatever. And, you know, you, you tend to find with these reviews where it's just about volume, they'll tend to sit on the fence. So if there's an issue with it, it'll be a bit more diplomatic, like, oh, this is not bad for the money, or you can get around this or blah, blah, blah which I do think is a bit troublesome for people maybe that are new to the hobby because you know you you really do want a review which is a bit more objective now I myself 99% of my stuff on my channel is all stuff that I've purchased over the years you know because I've obviously been through my own cycle of purchasing gear and going through the usual astrophotography thing of different telescopes and cameras what have you but I've only ever actually had one telescope sent to me which was an SV Boney 120mm. Um, I actually took that video down off my channel because I did not, I didn't like the experience. There was nothing particularly wrong with the way that the communication went, but you do find yourself having this thing where you will, I do think it's a very human thing that if you're being sent something for review, um, there's a relationship there and the way that you phrase things will tend to change. Now, part of that is just human, I think, because you have a relationship. Part of it might be, again, you, there's a vested interest there because you know gear reviews do well, so you want to get sent more gear. So the good things you tend to review and say they're good, the mediocre things you tend to be a bit more neutral about. Um, and, you know, I think whether it's intentional or not, I think that can't help but skew objectivity then and I don't think it's very good there are definitely channels that that I've seen that I will not watch just because I can tell straight away that it's just about gear like you know what I mean and and, and it's also not been properly reviewed and um, so there's not really been much time spent with the gear it's just open the box talk about the specifications if you're lucky you might get a couple of pictures um, and um, yeah, I just think that's an interesting thing to think about. I mean, same thing here, look. I mean, talked about, I got onto this by looking at a, 
a guitar video. Now this is my one of my guitars here, I've only got two, but this is not the best guitar in the world. It's a fairly affordable, it's got a solid top, but it's all laminate back and sides, but it plays well, it does the job well. Um, I could buy another guitar, and I probably will one day, but one thing's for sure, it's not gonna make me play any better. What's gonna make me play better is watching other people play well and getting inspired and sitting down and practicing myself is primarily what's going to make me get better. Now, I think again, the same thing with astronomy and telescopes. I think sometimes too much is made of the gear of the cameras. People will sell that like it's going to change the the earth for you. You know, I went down the whole one shot color and then I went into mono. Um which is great, you know, don't get me wrong, mono is great, but after all said and done, I went back to One Shot Colour and sold my mono rig because I actually prefer the experience of just shooting in One Shot Colour. I don't want all the overheads of all the different filters. And people will make arguments for why mono is better and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And sure, on an even playing field, all things considered, mono is better. But is it better for you? So long as you're getting good pictures and you're enjoying the hobby, um, then it, all of this stuff is really quite subjective. So, you know, I've actually come to a point in the hobby where I've just got a couple of relatively affordable budget sort of doublet telescopes. I sold my triplets, I don't have my mono rig anymore, but I'm at a point now where I enjoy the hobby and um, I don't stress too much about the gear that I've got. And I can still get really good pictures out of budget quality gear. And again, it's like one of those things where I think I think you see misleading videos in the hobby where they'll sort of tell you that you've got to have this or you've got to have this gear in order to get um, in order to have good quality things or they'll they'll sort of overemphasize the positive qualities of the optics or the camera or whatever it is and you know when all said and done if you're just pushing gear out of your channel I just think people end up overselling stuff and I think it comes across as disingenuous um, so yeah I mean the point of this video was really just to sort of have a think about, um, I don't know, YouTube videos in general, can you trust them? Are they trustworthy sources for information? And obviously the answer to that is it depends and it varies. Some are very good, some aren't. I think in general, if you can find a video by somebody who owns that piece of gear and they've used it a lot, they're the best ones to go for. Um, there is a, I think, an overabundance of videos which are just reviewing gear for views and hits and to grow the size of their channel and, and blah, 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 um, which is getting quite saturated now. And I personally find them really quite bland and boring, but I know that there's got to be a certain amount of those out there, but it is just such a saturation of it now. But in general, um, it's, a, it's a difficult balance. It's a difficult balance for those channels as well. Um, but I think as a consumer, if you're out there looking at these channels, I mean, what do you do? I mean, you've got to just look at multiple sources, you know, m look at multiple sources of information, whether that be forums and um, YouTube channels and whatever. Um, astronomy clubs is always a good source for information. Um, and I guess as content creators, it's just one of those things that, um, people have to make their own calls on about where they're gonna sit and um, and try to be as objective as they can. I think some people obviously succeed a lot better than others. I think it depends what the motivation is. If the motivation is really to pass on information, you often see those channels grow at a, let's just say, a, a less fast rate. Whereas I think if the motivation is to sell units and to promote gear primarily often those channels do um get bigger quicker which often means they're the ones that come up in the in your search algorithms often so it's a you know there's a lot going on there and i'd be interested to know what your thoughts are on all this guys because it's definitely a bit of a minefield out there um and we've all got our own take on it that's 10 cents of my take on it um so let me know in the comments i don't know how do you feel about it how do you feel about the whole ecosystem or are you just sort of getting into the hobby and sort of wondering what on earth do you do with all these information sources anyway 
let me know. That's just a bit of a rant there and um, I'm interested to know your thoughts. So whatever you're doing, have fun with it and um, yeah, I'll catch you next time.